we are going to use the component method. But first, we should always try to take this diagram and turn it into something that looks a little bit easier. So the center of the question is going to be there. So I'm going to make a little dot. Then I know that there's a force going down, which is gravity of 400 newtons. Now, guys, have a look carefully at this pole. What is this pole doing to this point? If you look carefully, you'll see that the string or the rope is going around the pole. So what that pole is doing is it's keeping the string going in that direction. It's pushing the string away, so it's going in that direction. Okay, and the angle is 20 degrees, and the force there is F2. We don't know what it is, so we'll just call it F2. Now, what is this piece of rope here doing? Well, that's sort of keeping, it's pulling to the left, so it's going in that direction, and that angle is 45 degrees. Now we're going to use the component method, which is where you need to get every single force into its horizontal and its vertical. And we do that by making simple little triangles like this. We call it X and Y. And then, of course, we're going to do the same for this one. And that'll be its X and its Y. And then for the 400, we don't have to do anything because it is only a vertical force. So I'm going to start with this triangle here on the left hand side and I'm going to draw a little triangle for us over here where this is F1, 45 degrees X and Y and we're going to use Sokotoa. So I'm going to start with X. So we know that X is the adjacent and we have the hypotenuse, so that's cos. So we're going to say cos 45 equals to x over f1 and it doesn't matter if you don't know what f1 is it's okay so you're just going to get x alone now so x is going to be equal to f1 multiplied by cos 45 and I can now go fill that in on the diagram so this is going to be f1 cos 45 then I'm going to try find the opposite which is y and so that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse which is now sin so I'm going to say sin 45 equals to the opposite over the hypotenuse I then get y alone by multiplying the f1 across like that and so we can say f1 sin 45 now I'm going to move on to the next triangle so I'm going to do this triangle over here and so I'm going to draw it out for us like that where this will be X this will be Y this will be F2 and this is 20 degrees so now it's the same thing we're going to use Sokotoa once again so we know that X is the adjacent F2 is the hypotenuse that's cos so we're going to say cos 20 equals to X over F2 we're then going to get x alone, which will be f2 cos 20. I'm going to go fill that in on our diagram now as f2 cos 20. Now we're going to do the vertical component, which is y. And so that's going to be opposite over hypotenuse, which is sin. And so we can say that sin 20 is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. And then we can get y alone as F2 multiplied by sin 20. I'm going to fill that in. So F2 sin 20. And that's it, guys. Now, what we need to understand is that if this object is not moving, then it means that all the forces going to the left will be the same as all the forces going to the right. And all the forces going up must be the same as all the forces going down. So I'm going to start with the left and the right. What forces are going left and right? Well, you should identify that F1 is actually going left and up, and F2 is going right and up. So the left is going to be, so the left and the right is going to be F1 cos 45 will have to be exactly the same as F2 
cos 20. What I'm saying is that this force must be the same as that. Because if it's not, then the object is going to move either left or right. But now, Kevin, what are we going to do? We've got F1 and F2. Guys, it's absolutely fine. We can't do anything. This is quite a difficult question. So we won't do anything at the moment. There's two unknowns. You cannot solve that mathematically. So now what we do is we'll just call that equation number one and we'll leave it alone for now. Now we're going to move on to the verticals. So we can say that all the upwards must be equal to all the downwards. So all the upwards would be F1 sin 45 plus F2 sin 20 would have to equal all the downs, which is 400. Now, can you guys see what happens? We have two equations with two unknowns, and so we're going to do this simultaneously. Now, don't be afraid or concerned. I know it looks intimidating with all the sin and the cos, but I'll show you. It's actually quite easy. So what we can do is try get F1 or F2 alone. So I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to get F1 by itself. I do that by simply dividing by cos 45. There we go. I now have F1 by itself. I'm now going to take that and plug it into F1 over here. So in brackets, I'm going to plug in F1 as F2 cos 20 over cos 45. And then that's only F1. So remember that there's also the sin 45 plus F2 sin 20 equals to 400. Now, what you can do is you can type all of this. Let me do it in a different color. All of this can be typed in on your calculator. It's all just one term. So you can type in cos 20 multiplied by sin 45 divided by cos 45. And that's going to give you 0, comma. I'm just going to keep the first three numbers on the calculator, or actually the first four, just to improve the accuracy a bit, because this isn't the final answer. So I'm going to go 0 0.9396, and then that F, uh, F2 is still over there. So I'm going to put F2 plus. Now this, if you type in sin 20, that's also just a number. So type sin 20 on your calculator, and it's going to give you 0, comma, 3420. F2 equals to 400. Now you can just add these two together. So it will be 0 0.9396 plus 0 0.3420, which gives you 1.2816 F2 equals to 400. You can then get F2 alone by dividing by 1.2816. And that's going to give you 312 0.1 newtons. Now I can round off to two decimals, which will actually be one point. It will actually be 0 0.11. Now all I do is I plug that answer for F2 into here to get F1. Makes sense, right? So we say F1 is going to be equal to 312.11 multiplied by cos 20 over cos 45. Go ahead, type that in. And so that's going to give us 414.77 newtons for F1.